everyone. I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to be learning how to crochet the Winter Bliss Throw, which is a beautifully subtly textured crochet blanket made with a super bulky weight yarn. And uh, I've shown you some photos there. There's many more on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. And this is just the corner of my blanket here. So it's absolutely uh, beautiful. It has a great texture made with a thick yarn so it's not going to take you too too long to work this blanket. The stitches used in it are slip stitches worked in the back loop only as well as the herringbone single crochet stitch which I'll demonstrate how to do in this video. I've included a simple edging of half double crochet stitches around uh, the entire thing. For this crochet pattern today you're going to need um, I've used eight balls of a Woolies Thick and Quick. It's a super bulky weight yarn. These are the bonus bundles. So there's about 212 yards. So altogether you're going to need about um, 1600 uh, yards for this blanket of a super bulky weight yarn. And I'm using this Woolies Thick and Quick. It's a wool and acrylic blend. You're also going to need a 10 millimeter crochet hook and uh, I'll have links for all these items in the description of this video. Also in the description there you'll find a direct link to the free written pattern uh, which is on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, one final note this is a square blanket. The finished size as I've worked it here is about 60 inches by 60 inches. Uh, there's no uh, need to have specific multiples so it's easy to change the size of your throw just work your chain to the desired uh, width and then work as many rows in this pattern as you would like so uh, yeah thank you so much for joining me and uh, I invite you to take a look around subscribe there's lots of other great crochet blankets here on my channel uh, and uh, you can check some of those out as well now this blanket pattern is worked in rows uh, and uh, so we're going to start by working our slip knot and then we're going to chain 120 chains. Now again I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial that if you would like to change the size of your throw you can. You don't need a specific multiple of stitches. Simply chain your foundation chain to the desired length as I'm going to do here. Today in the tutorial I'm just going to work a little swatch of the blanket just to give you an idea as far as how it is worked. So you can simply chain to your desired length or chain 120 chains which is what I have done for my larger blanket. Once you've worked that foundation chain you're going to begin row one by counting in and working into the second chain from your hook and working one half double crochet stitch. I like to work into the back bumps of my stitches because it gives you this nice finished edge on the other side but it's not necessary if you prefer to work otherwise. So a half double crochet into the second chain from your hook and then into each stitch all the way across chain one and turn your work. At the end of row one, you chained one and turn your work. For rows two, three, and four, so for the next three rows, we're now going to work rows of slip stitches worked in the back loop only. So you have your chain one here, and then this is my first stitch. What you're going to do is you're going to insert your hook under the back loop only, which is that loop that is the furthest away from you grab your yarn pull it through and pull it through the loop on your hook so that's your slip stitch you're going to slip stitch into that first stitch working in the back loop only and then into each stitch all the way across and you're going to do this for rows two three and four so at the end of row two you'll slip stitch all the way across chain one turn your work 
continue working under that back loop only and uh, slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. I'm almost to the end of my swatch so I'm going to show you what I mean here in a sec. So this is the end of my row two At the end of row two, chain one, turn your work, looking at the tops of your stitches for row three under that back loop only, slip stitch all the way across. So go ahead, complete rows two, three, and four, working slip stitches in the back loop only, chain one, turn your work, and then meet me back here for row five. I'm here at the end of my row four. I've worked three rows of slip stitches. You're going to chain one and turn your work. You now have the right side of your work facing. For row five, you're going to continue working in that back loop only. Only this time we're going to work single crochet stitches all the way across. So single crochet into that first stitch and then into each stitch all the way across. At the end of this row, row five, chain one and turn your work. For row six, you've chained one and you've turned your work. We're now going to work uh, the first of our herringbone single crochet stitch pattern. We're going to start working a reverse herringbone single crochet stitch. So depending on what side of your work on, if you have the wrong side facing, you'll want to work the reverse stitch. If you have the right side facing, you'll just want to work a regular herringbone stitch. So what you're going to do to work the reverse single crochet herringbone stitch, you're going to start off by working a single crochet into this first stitch. You want to work a reverse single crochet, however, because you want uh, the stitch to be facing the other direction. So what you're going to do is kind of bring your yarn back towards your work. And when working these reverse stitches, I find it best if my hook is pointing away from me. Normally when I work, I have my hook like this, but for these reverse stitches, turn your hook so it's facing away from you. For the single crochet, you're going to insert your hook working from the back through to the front, working under both loops. You're going to grab a hold of that yarn and pull it through and up. You'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through those two loops. That's your reverse single crochet stitch. I'll show you one more time. And it does take a little bit uh, to get the hang of it. So my hook is pointing away from me. I'm bringing my yarn kind of toward the back, toward me a little bit, toward the back of my work here, which is facing, which is showing me. And uh, you're going to insert your hook from the back, which is the right side of your work, through to the front, grab that yarn and pull it through. Yarn over and pull through two loops. Now that you've worked your first reverse single crochet, we can now work the reverse uh, herringbone single crochet stitches. To work the reverse herringbone single crochet, you're going to kind of pull your work forward and you see this horizontal bar of the post of the single crochet just worked. You're going to insert your hook, again keep the hook facing away from you, insert it under that horizontal bar of the post of the stitch you just worked. Insert your hook again from the back, which is the right side of your work, through to the front under both loops of the next stitch. Grab that yarn, pull it through. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. That's your herringbone single crochet stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way across. So I'll show you again. 
looking at your work, you have this horizontal bar here. Insert your hook under that horizontal bar on the post of the stitch you just made. Then insert your hook under both loops of the next stitch. Grab your yarn, pull it through and up, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three. Continue to repeat that all the way across. You're always grabbing the horizontal bar of the previous stitch. Uh, that's furthest there to the left here. So we're just inserting our hook, uh, inserting it through the next stitch, yarning over and pulling through. When you look at the front of your work, you're gonna see that it has kind of this diagonal look, which really stands out. Uh, when you have them worked one on top of each other, which we're going to see. So work your reverse herringbone single crochet stitches all the way across. When you come to the end of your work, chain one and turn. At the end of row six, chain one and turn your work. You now have the right side of your work facing you. For row seven, you're going to begin by working a single crochet into that first stitch. And next you're going to work herringbone single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way across. To work the herringbone single crochet stitch, it's a little bit easier. You have your horizontal, uh, your vertical bar here right there in front insert your hook underneath that bar and then underneath the stitch the next stitch yarn over draw up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three so this is your just your plain old herringbone single crochet stitch you're going to work those all the way across and as you do i'll work a few more here for you as you do, you're going to see that you have this nice kind of almost braided look coming out in your work. So continue working herringbone single crochet stitches all the way across. At the end, chain one and turn your work. At the end of row seven, chain one, turn your work. You're now going to, for rows 8 through to 11, so for the next 4 rows, you're going to repeat your row 6 and 7 twice more. So your row 6 was beginning with the reverse single crochet stitch, followed by reverse herringbone single crochet stitches all the way across, and then that row you just worked with the plain old single crochet, and the herringbone single crochets all the way across. So repeat rows six and seven two more times and then meet me back here. Once you have worked uh, through to row 11, this is what your work from the beginning will look like. You have your rows of slip stitches, followed by six rows of herringbone single crochet pattern and uh, it should be coming out quite beautifully now. Uh, now what you're going to do is you're going to repeat your rows two, which was that first slip stitch in the back loop only row. Repeat rows two through to 11 until your work from the beginning measures approximately 56 inches. Okay, so continue to repeat this pattern uh, until your work from the beginning measures approximately 56 inches and uh, I'm going to pretend that I've done that. Once you've worked 56 inches, you're going to go ahead and you're going to repeat uh, your rows 2, 3, and 4 uh, one more time. So once you've worked the 56 inches, work your slip stitches, 3 rows of slip stitches in the back loop only uh, and that will bring you uh, to the end of almost the end of your blanket pattern and it should measure by then about 57 inches 
So go ahead, repeat rows 2 to 11 until it measures about 56 inches. Then repeat rows 2, 3, and 4, and then meet me back here. And we will work our final row, followed by the simple edging for our blanket. At the end of your slip stitch row repeats, you're going to chain one, turn your work. You should now have the right side of your work facing again. You're going to work in the back loop only and this time for your final row, you're going to work in the back loop only and work half double crochet stitches all the way across. So half double crochet in that first stitch and then half double crochet in each stitch all the way across. When you come to the end of this row, there's no need to fasten off. If you have any ends that you want to weave in, you can at this point, but do not fasten off. At the end of that final row of half double crochet stitches, your blanket is now complete. Now if you'd like, you can simply add a fringe to each end if you'd like, or you can work the simple edging. I did find that uh, the rough edge was a little bit too rough, so I wanted to add an edging all the way around just to kind of smooth it out a little. So for your edging of your blanket, you've worked your final stitch. You're going to chain one, and now turn your blanket so that you're working along that rough edge and you're going to go down into it just a little bit and work a half double crochet stitch. You're then going to work a total of 105, if you're going by the same dimensions as I am, 105 half double crochet stitches, uh, or sorry, we're gonna work 110 <laughs> half double crochet stitches all the way across even, uh, evenly all the way across the edge of your blanket. So there's no pretty places to put your hook. So you're just kind of putting it wherever your hook is comfortable. Now, if you find that 110 is too many, maybe you feel your blanket is bunching a little bit, you can do less. Uh, just remember to make note of it so that when you come uh, to the other side, you know how many stitches you had and you can make it even. So you're just going to continue working half double crochet stitches all the way across. And I'm just going to keep going here. All the way along the rough edge of your blanket. You should have the right side of your blanket showing. I've obviously changed how many I'm going to be working here for my little swatch. And again, if you've changed the size of your blanket, you'll want to do the same. When you come to the corner of your blanket, you're going to work three half double crochet stitches into that corner stitch. There's one, two, and three and what that's going to do is it's going to kind of force you to turn your work and you're now going to work across the bottom of your blanket half double crochet into each stitch all the way across the bottom of your blanket when you come to the corner stitch work three half double crochet stitches into the corner work all the way up the opposite side three in that corner and then all the way along the top of your blanket. When you come back to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. You can then fasten off and weave in your ends. And that brings you to the end of your winter bliss throw. So thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial on how to crochet the Winter Bliss Throw. Once again, I invite you to subscribe. If you make this blanket, share it with me on Facebook, Instagram, uh, across social media, because I love to admire your work. So thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye.